You know me. I love some mining, some crafting, and some good old-fashioned survival. I'm flying! But what if we venture out of the blocky world and into more of a fiery one? This is Enshrouded, and I was sponsored by Keen Games to play 10 hours of a game and see just what trouble I could get up to. Just cozying up with my buddy Phil here. It's fine. And I'm not gonna lie, me and my beautifully bald head, we got up to some trouble. Why are there bees running a bed and breakfast? Y'all wanna check it out? Link is in the description, but let's get started. Hour one. So I made my character and jumped in, waking up in a weird egg pot thing and getting ready to go. I'm just chilling. I look awesome. Okay. Oh, okay. Control is like a dive. Shift is a run. Jump. Once I had control of myself, I went out and talked to some fire, getting a general guideline of what I need to do, save the world. Sounds pretty clear enough. I stepped through the door to a massive open world with huge horizons and you can go there, trust me, I do. But it wouldn't be a good survival game if everything wasn't completely broken and that was made very clear very quickly. Oh, oh. Buddy, are you okay? Drew light engulfs the knowledge of the ancient breed, protected as flame core. Yes, whispers. I can see nothing bad coming from advice from a person named Balthazar. Did anybody else see Halloween Town? Balthazar is the bad guy. So off on my adventure, I went, grabbing a torch, working my way through a nearby cave system. This is basically to get me started on movement, understanding what works, and understanding the shroud. So basically, whenever you go down into this fog, you're put on a five minute timer. Stay in there too long? Well, you're dead. There's a lot of things that actually eat away at the time too when you're inside of it, and there's these mushroom zombies that aren't exactly like The Last of Us, but you get a similar vibe. Mushroom apocalypse is so hot right now. But I made my way through that, getting to another one of these spheres, which would basically act as a respawn point if I died. Oh yeah, but we're not gonna die, so it's totally fine. From there, I leveled up from making it to long keep and levels and all of the RPG and experience mechanics. We'll get into that a little bit later. Just keep that in the back of your mind. But I gathered some water from the well here, which would increase my stamina bar, allowing me to perform more actions before needing to stop and take a rest. And then heading over towards where the game was giving me an idea of this is where I should live. Then it was time to fight a wolf. Sorry, puppy. Now having upset all the dog owners watching this video, myself included, I ran around grabbing a few rocks, which I would be able to then use to convert into an altar. Once I had everything I needed, I crafted up the altar and threw that down, getting a very bird's eye view of what would become basically the safe space that I would be able to build my home location in. Now this first one was indicated by the game. It's kind of tutorialized to be here, but you can build a bunch of these out in the world too. And each one will allow you to do some really cool stuff. But with a base completed, I went through a few of the crafting recipes, but didn't want to do more building right away. Instead, I wanted to go out and explore. I had a waypoint to find a sleeping survivor out in the distance, so I headed off in that direction, fighting another wolf, grabbing some mushrooms, saving a goat from a wolf, and then turning the goat into more food myself, and then making my way towards a bridge that had been, uh, let's say, unrenovated. <laughs> A nearby book told me that it had been exploded intentionally to prevent marauders from crossing, probably a good idea considering what we're about to run into, but that did force me down into the shroud. Spooky mushrooms. Replenishes your time. Oh, I'm on the clock. I can only be in here for five minutes. Once I actually realized I was on a timer, I moved with a little bit more expediency, making my way through a few little climbing areas to get up and out of the fog, and then landing up on the other side of the bridge, getting almost immediately one shot by somebody with a giant crossbow. 
Now realizing that things were going to be a little bit more dangerous, I took absolutely no heed in that and made it to the first area where the game was suggesting stealth. And I just did not heed that suggestion. Oh, there's a lot of baddies here. Oh my god, there's a lot of baddies here. How far do I have to go? Hold E to throw. Oh no. Oh no. Nope. I didn't do anything. Leave me alone. Oh god. One more hit and I'm dead. Oh, ho, ho. yo, that was so close to very bad. It still is. I have to kill their friend. F oh, great. Food poisoning. I did not manage that correctly. Ooh, there's a ring. Ooh, can I equip that? Let's craft a wand. No! They were almost dead too. Oh yeah, but we're not gonna die, so it's totally fine. No, but we're not gonna die. It's fine. Sucker. Okay, look, maybe I was a little overconfident. Maybe I was just thinking that every game is as simple combat-wise as Minecraft. I was clearly wrong. This will not be the last death. So I quickly made my way back over through the shroud, climbing back up all of the areas, making my way to the headstone, and recollecting all of my items. This time, I actually tried stealth, staying inside all of the bushes, mainly because all of the enemies respawned as soon as I died, so any progress I had made had been lost. The only problem we have here is that magic seems insanely inaccurate past a certain distance, and even when the particle hits, it doesn't actually connect and do damage to the enemy that you're trying to kill, so I have to get close enough to aggro them and then back up as they're running at me to throw magic in their direction. There we go. We had it this time. First try. First try. Magic is the way to go. I love being a wizard. Awakened survivor. Oswald Anders the blacksmith. Is it open? We have a new egg? Read. It's done. The cinder vessel's delicate contraption still volatile, brimming with potential. First human to enter will be our true prototype, the kindling of a new spark. The blacksmith volunteered. You must enter the vessel and sleep until aroused anew. May the ashes of one age sustain the seeds of the next. Balthazar. I don't trust Balthazar. <laughs> Place them in your home with a summoning staff. Ooh, navigate with the map I and select your home. I can just fast travel back? Oh, that's so useful. Once I was home, I spoke with the flames again. I'm really turning into Melisandre here, making myself a summoning staff, which would allow me to place down the blacksmith, who is, let's just say, a very large man. Oswald! Oswald is massive. Hey! Oh, Oswald's just hovering. Oswald, you're so tall. You need nails. So string, wood. Okay, I got an idea what we need to do. I don't like you being that much taller than me. This is not okay. Not okay, Oswald. Turns out it was actually just a little bit of Hobbit force perspective style stuff. So once the blacksmith wasn't levitating, we were about the same height. I'm not obsessed with that at all. 
But they unlocked a whole ton of new crafting recipes and tools, as well as some armor, but they were asking for things like a house and a workstation, so... Looks like I'm the only one around here who's actually gonna do anything. I, I mean, it's a survival game, that's how that works, right? But I ran around grabbing some plant fiber, which would allow me to craft up some string, which would then allow me to make myself an ax so I could chop trees to get a whole bunch more wood. Night fell fast, by the way. It was, it might seem like I cut out a lot. Uh-uh, that happens so quickly. But once I had a crafting table, some old friends reappeared, let's say. Equipable, interesting. You get a hundred blocks from two logs? Oh, that's wonderful. Storage. A tiny chest. A few items and logs. Let's go straight to the good chest. For that, we'll need nails. Now wanting a bunch of storage, I spent more time chopping down a whole bunch of trees, getting the wood, which would allow me to make a chest, which I threw everything from my inventory that I didn't know what to do with into. I made a charcoal kiln, which I know I'll need charcoal a little bit later, plopping that down a little bit ways off, but I need dirt in order to make charcoal, and I can't exactly figure out how to make dirt. But I used what little metal scraps I had to make myself a chest plate so I'd be a little bit easier to, you know, not die. And once I had done that, I fulfilled the first part of the quest, giving me a whole bunch of other quests from the blacksmith to go out into the world to venture either to collect more resources or more allies. But I spent the rest of the night just chopping down a whole bunch of trees, gathering wood, making a campfire, cooking myself a little bit of food so I wouldn't give myself food poisoning again, and then fighting a few mushroom zombies that wandered in just as the sun rose. Whew, that's a lot for day one. But I started day two looking at the crafting recipes, and I can make a glider. Shroud wood, shroud spores, string, and animal fur. I know where to get all of those things, probably. So, you know, you know me, if any game gives me the opportunity to fly, I'm immediately going to beeline towards that capability of flight. So I dove down into the shrouded area immediately, trying to figure out what was shroud wood. I was chopping down anything that looked vaguely tree-like, figuring out exactly, you know, it comes from the trees. It's all in the trees. Spending a good portion of the day just collecting resources, getting all of the wood, spores, and some shroud liquid from the mushrooms on the ground. I also just kind of chased a goat around for a while. Get over here, goat. I need fur. Sorry. I'm sorry. But I continued exploring around, keeping a careful eye on my timer, including when I popped this little spore ball that seemed to take away a portion of my time. That is something I'm going to need to be careful of going forward. But once I had all the resources I needed, I headed back up towards home, doing a little bit of campfire grilling so I had more meat. I still am not recovering health from food. I need to figure that out at some point or I'm gonna end up dying. But I was able to make a lot of string and then craft myself up my goal. Yes. Glider, hold on, character. So with that unlocked, I took a look at some of the other quests that I had and whereabouts they were situated. I was told to clear the elixir well, which seems like the next possible good opportunity. But in going into the menus, I was reminded of my skills. I'd unlocked two skill points from my leveling up to this point so far. And look at this skill tree. There's a lot here that you can actually sort of spec yourself into like battle mage, healer, athlete, beast master. And there's a bunch of different nodes on the grid. So I had two skill points and I spent them to unlock merciless attack, which is basically a finishing move. I then made myself some stone blocks and the minecrafter in me, I got to building. Interesting. Okay, the whole block system, I can build basically anything I want. The blocks are interesting, but they're something that I'll play around with a little bit more in time. For now, I wanted to fly. All right, uh, 
This might be dumb. It might not. Oh, this is so cool. Okay. No. No. Why are they purple? Okay. Oh my god, you hit like a truck. I don't like the look of you. No! I got killed by bugs. How embarrassing. Oh yeah, but we're not gonna die, so it's totally fine. Okay, told you what that wasn't gonna be the last death. The only problem I had now is I was right next to this return beacon which meant I was respawning right here in the middle of the fight that I just died from, and it was a bit of a death loop, I'm not gonna lie. I was able to take out one, maybe two enemies. I found a few other different pieces of like blocks or loot or some torches that would increase my spore time, but the enemies were pretty bad. I was able to recover my loot from the bugs and just try to reset myself, but was then taken out by the spore zombies, literally right next to the spawn point, which would make me respawn and be in their aggro range. So I'd have to fight and die and fight and die. And I felt like Tom Cruise in that one movie against the aliens. But it turns out, actually, everything I've been doing to this point was on top of what I actually needed to go do. There was a space down into the actual well itself directly behind the respawn beacon. So I climbed down that, reorganizing my inventory, preparing for like a little mini dungeon of sorts, thinking that should be what I'd have to do. Walking around to a very grabby looking little red root and a very angry looking boss. Look, I wasn't prepared for this to turn into Dark Souls for a minute here, but I am going to dodge my butt off and throw Avada Kedavra spells as much as I can. I'm constantly rolling out of the way, trying to avoid any of the attacks, not taking the damage, and I'm actually decently chunking down the Thunder Brute. Uh, it's like below half health at this point. And I have a glowy stick and a t-shirt and oh, oh no, I, I'm dead. No! So I thought this time, this time I know it's a boss battle. Let me go in. Now knowing that it is a little bit of a boss battle, I need to kite around. I need to make sure to conserve my energy, my stamina, so that I could always do a dodge roll out of the way. And I'm doing, like I said, decent damage. I got the boss through about 75% of their health before my luck ran out. Oh, come on. So I tried a third time and, and died again. And at this point, I'm maybe eight or nine deaths in, and I'm thinking, this seems like this is a level five area. I'm level two. Maybe I should get the hints. So I ran back through the shrouded area, taking a ton of damage from random mobs along the way. And you know what the worst part is? My sword was broken. So I couldn't even fight anymore. So I left. I ran away from the elixir well through the shrouded area into just normal terrain and making my way back towards home. Kind of Skyrim horsing myself up the side of a mountain path instead of trying to find the proper way around. And as I ended day two, it was clear I had a lot to learn. And I had a lot of growing to do if I wanted to be able to save this world. The next morning I figured let's get started with all of the building because that's kind of what I'm actually most interested to play around with. But then I was attacked by a wolf and a mushroom zombie which led me to this small enshrouded area right next to where spawn was. It was only about one or two rooms, a few enemies that were quickly dispatched, but a very nice piece of loot at the end. Oh. I'll take that. 
I spent some time collecting all of the metal scraps and other resources from around here in this little sort of dungeon space, heading back towards my home and then running around to collect a whole ton of plant fiber because I know I'm gonna need that for more string for more construction. But I made a whole bunch of blocks and started building out some of the individual walls for a base. Seeing that with a construction hammer, you can actually build like full tile sets instead of doing it one block at a time. And I was able to make a bed for myself, go out, chop a little bit more wood, and I'm trying to figure out why it won't let me sleep through the day. But it's also giving me the rested perk, which will just generally recover me, which is definitely nice. But to really start making progress, I need to get charcoal to be able to get towards the forge. And to be able to do that, I need to get more metal scrap. So I headed over towards another enshrouded area, breaking down anything that had anything vaguely metal as part of it to try to see if that would drop the resources that I would need. I found a little bit of lore, I fought some other zombies, and I found another chest which required a lockpick to open which required me to spend two of the metal scraps that I had collected, and I had only found two. I got some flint arrows out of it, but now I'm back down to zero when it comes to the metal scraps that I was actually looking for, so long keep was a bit of a bust. I did break down more resource nodes throughout the rest of the night as it was dark. I ended up getting about five pieces of scrap, but I still need a lot more. Plus, I need some more shroud wood. So I dove down into the enshrouded area, fighting a few more of the undead here, running around getting into a little bit of trouble, but finding this tower that would allow me to get up above the shroud so I could fast travel out of the enshrouded area. Good to know for later. I think I finally have a handle on how magic works, and I'm starting to realize that I have a lot to learn when it comes to the combat system here. But I ran back to that tower in the morning, warping back up to my hideout, and then heading off in a direction towards my next major story waypoint. I figure they give metal scraps pretty decently as long as you're on the critical path of the adventure, so I'm just gonna go there and hope I get what I need to be able to unlock the pickaxe along the way. I found a few random loot chests and some areas that I needed a grapple hook to climb around. That's something I'll unlock later, flying over most of of the shroud and heading back out finding the corresponding lore books on the other side of the bridge about how that bridge had been destroyed. And my good friends the bandits outside of the blacksmith's area, they had respawned and thankfully they drop metal shards. So I spent some time clearing that area and then actually properly looting the area outside of where the blacksmith had been stored inside their little pot. I got a whole bunch of lore, a whole bunch of metal scraps and some new loot to boot. I got a grenade. The game gave me a grenade. What were they thinking? I also continued exploring around the area, finding a flint mine, which I figure once I have a pickaxe will actually be useful to me. But for now, I just kind of filed this location away in my memory and warped back home. All right, I can make this. And once we get a bunch more scraps, we can make that, but we can also make charcoal. Getting dirt was actually very easy. You hit the ground with a pickaxe and you just start excavating a hole. Once I had about 80 dirt, which, okay, that's very generous given how stingy it is with metal scraps at the very beginning. I set all of the charcoal to get cooking and then broke apart a few of the boulders near the homestead so that I could get a whole bunch of stone to convert a lot of that into stone blocks. I also made fur gloves and shoes, so now I'm not running around nearly as naked as I was previously. Finally getting the plant fiber roof blocks, so I'd be able to put a roof on top of my head, and now my home was a tiny little one by one hut. But I needed even more metal to complete my armor set, so I dove back into the shroud, grabbing another ring from a random mob that dropped it, so that's a good health bonus. Picking up some more metal scraps from all of the metal cages, barrels, and the other kind of items that were available right here at this little camp in the middle. I also dug up a lot of the dirt road, which could be turned into dirt pass blocks and had to spend time leveling that back off or else it was gonna annoy me that I had basically made the biggest pothole ever as long as you don't count the potholes that can entirely have consumed Pennsylvania. If you're from Pennsylvania or you've ever driven through it, you get that joke, you get me. So glad I left. 
but I exited the shroud on the other side, making my way into Rookmore, which turns out is another bandit camp. I spent some time doing my patented run away while casting magic, killing some of the first door guards, breaking down some more barrels for metal scraps and getting some more grenades and finding out some more lore. I don't know who Balthazar is, but I do not trust him. I got into a few bow fights with a few of the giant artillery bandits, being able to take those out while dodging shots back and forth, finding a big dirt pile filled with explosive barrels that you know I blew up, running over to a nearby farmhouse, finding out that there was some really cool items in a chest upstairs, including an upgraded longbow. Oh, that's so good. What are we dropping for it? Bye-bye, fireflies. I flew back down into the bandit camp, finally hitting the RPG trifecta. Giant rat, it's finally time. Oh, a shepherd's staff. Equipable ranged weapon. That's a lot of magic. That's way better than my wand. No ammo. Equip spell charges to cast. Oh, that's fun. And now having everything I need, I warped my way back home because I have work to do. I immediately crafted up some of the metal scrap into nails, which would allow me to take the small chest that I had and turn it into a small magic chest. This would allow the contents of the chest to be available to any of the workstations or NPCs or even myself as long as we're in home base. So it makes crafting and storing things infinitely easier. I can just dump it here and then use it anywhere in the whole home. And once I picked up the charcoal from the kiln, I was able to craft up the forge, place that down, and you guessed it, I need more metal. Metal sheets. Oh boy. I can also now make the grappling hook, of which I was one scrap short on. But I also had a quest to provide the blacksmith with shelter. So I moved them over right next to the forge and then built them a little one by one cube, which would unlock the next level. They now had a home they were happy with, so that unlocked a whole bunch of new quest markers and items from the blacksmith for me to head out on. From there, I went out exploring, gliding through a new angle of the enshrouded area, finding a cave that I had not located previously and starting to adventure through. I broke all the barrels, trying to find some metal scraps, didn't get too lucky there, fought a few wolves and dug up a whole bunch of stone, flint, dirt, and other resources, having to spend one of my healing potions from almost dying at the very last wolf of the encounter. I also mined up some of this luminous growth, which is just a glowing rock of some kind. I don't know if this will come in handy, but you know, glowing rocks have never caused any problems for anybody just keeping them in their pockets. But once I was out of this cave, I got rewarded for my exploration. Where are we? Oh? Oh, what is this? Oh. Where are we? From there, I made my way back to Rookmore and spoiler behind the scenes, I had logged out and logged back in. This is a separate recording, which means the chest and enemies had reset. I had picked up a much more common staff, which is useful and running around fighting all of the enemies here, I was able to pick up a whole bunch more scrap. And that club is awesome, let me tell you. Oh yes. That felt good. But I spent the day just dodging around, magicking, using my bow and arrow, throwing the occasional grenade, getting into a bit of a melee scrap here and there, leveling up to level three just as it got dark. And you saw the night transition in real time there. I was not kidding when I said it comes in quick. But just as I had cleared the camp and everything was fine, I got a little surprise. Oh no, was that loot node trapped? Oh no, it was a bomb. 
I've never had a chest explode. <laughs> At least it wasn't a mimic. Okay. Yeah, that one's on me. Once the sun was up the following morning, I headed out to go back and recover my stuff. Making my way to the front gate, I got into a bit of a scrap with one of the NPCs that I had apparently missed at one point in time, heading back and picking up all of my gear. There's just a crater. This is where I used to be. There's genuinely just a crater here. So I'm not gonna lie, I am now wary of every lootable box that I'm ever gonna see for the rest of this game. I spent some time using my pickaxe to break down anything vaguely metal to pick up a whole bunch more metal scrap, finding another building that I completely missed in the middle of the night, catching a few other enemies there and going off and getting into a bit more fights. There was also some more of the shrouded coming out and trying to fight me, so I'm just clearing those as well, dealing with enemies from both sides. And a whole lot more explosions were waiting. Oh! Oh, that's a crater, all right. <laughs> I could just, just, this is awesome. After playing around with the bombs enough, I headed my way back home and with more than enough metal scraps in my inventory was finally able to make myself the grappling hook, fully unlocking the movement kit of the game. I also completed exploring the area directly surrounding my base, just running around trying to grab some more plant fiber actually, so I could build up more of a home finding a little bit more lore here, finding another little mini shrouded dungeon that had a chest inside and a few enemies that I could kill, getting myself a hatchet that would greatly increase my combat potential. This thing literally saw me through the whole video. It's awesome. I also figured out that you could turn some of the swords into coins. I found the cave from Little Red Riding Hood with a house inside guarded by three big bad wolves and I think I'm mixing my metaphors here a little bit. Running back home, making a whole bunch of string and finally actually making the grappling hook to complete my kit. I must have misread my notes when I was recording this voiceover, but I'm leaving that in because I want you all to see just how I kind of mess up and how the editors actually make me look good when I do this. Awesome but I banked my inventory jumping back down into the shrouded area to see what trouble I could get up into. I knew that one tower was right there, so I had a quick way out. So I jumped in to see, let's just do some fighting with the hatchet and get used to the new mechanic. I found this little offshoot area with a bridge over what looks like lava filled with enemies. And it was a pretty significant fight. The only problem was when I had banked all of my resources, I had banked my bow. So I had no ranged combat opportunities and killing everything with melee took a lot of time to the point where I only had a minute left on the clock. So I turned around and booked it, running off towards the tower that would get me up above the shroud and allow me to warp back home, but more importantly, reset my timer. And with only 20 seconds left on the clock, I finally cleared the mushrooms, made it to some breathable space and took a breath. So I fast traveled back home using some of the shroud resources that I had collected to make myself a second magical chest, doubling up on the inventory that is available to all of the different resource nodes across the entire base. I grilled up some of the food that I had collected and using the string that I had now made was able to make some bandages so I'd be able to heal myself in the middle of a fight, which is going to be very useful because I take a lot of damage in these fights because I still haven't learned how combat fully works. I also found out that I can make things like a stove, which would actually, you know, last for a while instead of just a campfire, and uh, went to demolish the campfire. Oh no. Did I break my floor? I broke my floor. <laughs> That's not what I meant to do. <laughs> oh my god. I wanted to make a little picnic space. All right, hold on. But once I repaired all of the damage there, which actually took a little bit of time to figure out and do the repairing, I actually 
had to make more wooden blocks to do it. I threw down the fireplace there, which meant that I could now cook food infinitely. I also made a few other decorative items, including a little picnic table and stools. And I thought, let's put this kind of item placing to the test, building myself a little area around the base with a firefly lamp, some clay pots and plates and cups, just making a little picnic area, making the space feel like an actual home instead of just where I happen to respawn from death. The lore is a little confusing, but I at least have my priorities straight. <laughs> That's beautiful. I made myself another small chest, vowing to upgrade that to another magical chest once I had the shroud items to be able to actually do so. Dropping off all of my equipment and items into that one, trying to keep things organized because I know I'm going to end up making a chest monster if I don't stay on top of it from day one in this game. Oh no, I broke the chair. Okay, I have to be very careful. The furniture is very fragile. <laughs> But I headed over to the blacksmith using all of the runes that I had collected either directly from enemies or from salvaging some of the old swords that I didn't need anymore to upgrade my hatchet multiple times, giving it extra bonus damage, both cutting and blunt damage. So it's just better. It's just built differently. I also set up some metal plates to start smelting so I'd be able to upgrade my armor set to be able to give myself a little bit more survivability. Heading over to some of the nearby areas, mainly looking for trees with yellow leaves because I had read that's the main place that you can get resin by chopping those down and resin is another resource needed for a lot of the things I need a kind of like this tier two armor set. I accidentally got a little lost making my way back to the cave that I had spawned from. Oh wait, is this where we started? Oh, this is where we started. Okay. Making my way back over to the bridge and finally being able to put my grappling hook to use. Oh, that is so cool. On the bridge itself, I was able to run around and get a few different resource nodes, finding a chest hidden down in the bottom area, and then climbing over one of the central spots to find a bunch of bear traps waiting for me, which I'm able to disarm by shooting with a wooden arrow. I broke down anything that looked vaguely metal so I could recoup some of the scraps so I'd be able to use that to be able to upgrade my armor, killing some of the enemies that had respawned over a log in and log out, and then chopping down any of the yellow trees that I saw to be able to get a bunch more resin. That kind of naturally led me back over in the direction of the small flint mine, so I spent time harvesting a bunch of flint stone. I didn't know what it was used for yet, but I knew it would undoubtedly be important. And now that I had a grappling hook, I was able to head up and over the area that was blocked to me before, heading down a new road which led to a new location on the map. And there was this massive tower looming over me, just this black and gold monolith stretching up to the sky. So I figure I have to go there and check it out. And on the way, I was following along these lore books about a hidden tomb and kind of found the end of a chapter. Misfortune strikes like lightning. <laughs> I left to see a hidden tomb. Wait out the storm that may bury empire wash away. Silver tongue dell. The tomb is close by. Oh, that's who was writing the book. They got splatted. <laughs> they got splatted by the tree. That's the hidden tomb, but it was this right here. This is big tower in distance. Ancient spire. Serve as a burial site similar to the Fane Shrines. Ancient store. All knowledge of the land. Balthazar, you fool. There's a respawn point here. What's this do? Oh. This dungeon is interesting. The terrain can't be modified like everything out in the open world, and it's kind of a rudimentary puzzle, just moving through, hitting all of the buttons, seeing what you can do, how you understand the mechanics of the game to the point so far, and it was a little kind of misleading at times. This one plate was giving me damage numbers, but I didn't actually need to shoot it. It was a little weird. 
but I was able to make my way through everything, taking a decent part of the night and being rewarded by being thorough in some of the rooms. Oh, that's so good. <laughs> a legendary ring of leech life. Oh, that's so good. But before it got too late, I reached the summit and was rewarded. Oh. And it turns out I had stumbled my way into the next step of the main story. So now having new allies to go and recruit, as well as a bunch of different things that I need to go do in the map, I think I need to go back and complete some of the other quests that I got all the way back on day one. First things first was collecting some of the metal plates, making the remainder of my armor set, realizing that I was just a few short to be able to make the boots. So I set that to smelt in the forge while running around chopping down trees, getting wood, resin, and mining up a little bit of flint that is actually at a node relatively close to the base. Once I had collected all of my armor set, I actually spent some of my skill points as well, upping my con and my strength, crafting up the final piece of my armor and getting myself looking like I'm actually ready for a fight. And I think you know what fight I'm going for as I headed out to the cliff overlooking the shroud and dove right in, flying directly towards the shroud well this time, taking out some of the enemies right around here, now actually knowing the combat mechanics and being able to block and parry and stun enemies, merciless attack, using my bow effectively, and also knowing that I needed to go underground instead of fighting infinitely on the surface, I headed down underground to go in and take on the boss. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, we got this. We got this. And I got his axe. <laughs> oh my god. That thing is brutal. Now would I destroy the shroud shroud roots? Destroy it with a felling axe and prosper. Oh, felling axe. Hey! Turns out, when you're prepared for the fight, it's actually pretty easy. Heck yeah! And yeah, when I made it back to the surface, there's now a pocket of normal air in the middle of the shroud here. There's still shroud enemies that I needed to clear and actually being surrounded by multiple sources of damage was more dangerous than taking on the singular boss. But I was able to clear out the space and there's now a little haven right here, making me feel like I've made actual progress in the world. A fell, wait, I have their head? I don't know what that's for. Okay, like sparks and offer them at the flame altar to strengthen the flame. Sparks like scattered around the world in sanctums and shrines. Oh, I can do this. Altar activation capacity, character attribute, bonus time in the shard. Strengthen the flame. Yes! I can now upgrade this with the Shroud Core. On the two ancient obelisks of the Springlands to learn the world's fate, a story of rotten fire. New location charted. Story of fire. A story of rot. 
Oh, I've unlocked a lot here. Oh boy, it's about to get interesting. So now I have a ton of different waypoints and markers sending me out in all sorts of different directions. But the thing I want to do is focus at home briefly. So I spent a good portion of day nine just chopping down trees, breaking down stone, making a whole bunch of different blocks and expanding out my home. I put a lot of work into just learning what the mechanics are and having this first initial house, which I just immediately demolished and then started making myself a proper homestead. It's still very much with the rough blocks, so the floor is slightly cracked. It would almost certainly give you splinters. The walls are just made out of rough stone. The door is yeah, a little drafty, let's say, but at least it's all there. I even started working on a second floor with an overhang for a back porch as well as some light, slightly compacted stairs accidentally demolishing the floor once in the process. But I set up walls that had windows. I set up everything else here, moved my bed to the upper floor, put the stove right next to it. I had spent all of day nine building. And now when I sleep, it actually fast forwards through the night. So I woke up right into day 10 and kept at it, using a lot of the roofing blocks that I had made to be able to collect and seal in the top of this home. And I have a little like, five by five or three by three house, an actual proper homestead that I've designed. I also invested a lot of the resin that I had collected to be able to make wall torches so the inside of the house is properly lit, made a little balcony that I'd be able to put storage up into later, and then moved my crafting table inside the house itself, doing a little bit of decorating here by having things be placed somewhat intentionally instead of just conveniently. And sure, from the outside, it's just a bit of a box, right? It's going to need a lot of decoration. And I started working on like a front awning to be able to figure that out, but I'm out of plant fibers and other resources. So, I mean, it's good to focus at home, but I am still supposed to be saving the world. So I warped over to the ancient spire in the Springlands and with my glider in tow, I can actually cover a ton of distance away from this, flying over towards the lost tomb entry that was on one of the major waypoints that I needed to collect. Now I'm going to give everybody a quick spider warning, uh, lots of spiders, there be lots of spiders in this next part. But I jumped down into a dungeon where, as I just mentioned, there's a ton of spiders. The walls are also exclusively made out of skulls, so that's something that is definitely setting the tone. But it all has this kind of eerie green glow, which fits well with the poison theme of a lot of the enemies that I'm fighting here. I'm using fire to kill everything because it's spiders, of course I am, and the torch is actually allowing me to be able to see what I'm doing, so that's definitely convenient. But I made my way to the giant tomb in the center of the somewhat donut-shaped tomb and got a bunch of bone blocks, which is not concerning at all. I'm not gonna make the walls of my house out of skulls. It's definitely a vibe though. So if I wanted to, I mean, I could. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I'd want to, but I ran black up to the surface and I'm in the middle of a new forested area that I hadn't yet deforested. So I ran around collecting a bunch of plant fiber that I'd be able to convert into string for bandages and other supplies. I also saw another homestead off in the distance. So I jumped on my glider trying to fly across to there, not being able to cover all the distance, but landing at another elixir well that I found completely randomly. And considering how well the last one had went, I just dove straight underground. I didn't have to deal with any of the exterior guards since I had basically attacked from the air. This one wasn't a boss fight either. It was more of a gauntlet taking out all of the enemies, but between my ax being upgraded, my armor being tier two, and me being kind of riding the high of a recent boss elimination, I was able to fight my way through a lot of these enemies, exploiting range for magic whenever I could, and getting in for a good old fashioned fight whenever I couldn't. I made my way right up to the shroud route, took out the last few enemies around here that were interrupting, and chopped that sucker down, unlocking another skill point and greenifying another section of the area, getting a pretty sizable reward in the process. Oh. That's a really good wand. 
I spent a bit more time collecting and actually exploring the remainder of the cave here in the elixir well, finding a few other chests with some mid-tier loot and finding a lot of bugs, which is a good way to get experience because you get it per kill, not exactly per how dangerous the enemy is. Once back up on the surface, I cleared a little bit of a path using range and then tried to vaguely steer myself towards those buildings that I had seen previously, making my way up towards another one of those ruined towers that just barely covers the shrouded area, making for a decent extraction point from the middle of the fog. I also upgraded to level four from just killing enemies. So my previous experience farming had been proving useful, climbing the ladders to make myself to fresh air, marking the location so I'd be able to use it later whenever I was in this section of the shroud. From here, I could actually see the farmstead that I had seen previously, diving out through that, having nightfall before I hit the ground, collecting myself out at Harvest Homestead, seeing a chest glowing in the middle of the night, digging that up and getting an epic root staff as the reward. Once I had that, I made my way into the house by breaking down the door and found a note about a super secret hidden root staff buried behind the building. Oh, oh wait. <laughs> But I headed upstairs where there was a bed, I was able to sleep the night away, doing a lot more exploring in the morning where I'm actually able to see what's going on. So the farmers here must have been doing really well for themselves considering the solid gold tub. But there wasn't a lot else that was able to really give an idea of what they were farming or maybe there's like a hidden chemical lab hidden underneath one of these hay bales. I didn't break everything so it's entirely possible. You're gonna have to come here to explore for yourself. What was here was a bunch of plant fiber available out in the fields directly in front of the place, which is good. A farmable spot to get a whole bunch of that is gonna be useful because I always seem to be short on string. I also found a respawn point and a little bit of lore relatively nearby with a church with a giant glowing green zombie standing at the altar, which is definitely not a bad omen. No, it's totally fine. There's something under here. But my inventory is full. So before I headed to the dungeon underground, which I could very clearly see was there, I warped back home to bank a lot of the resources that I had and convert some of the others into roof blocks and other supplies that I'd be able to use for more building. Then I warped back to the tower, flying my way back over towards the homestead where the zombie respawned, which was a little weird, but I jumped down into the dungeon proper. There's a book here saying that there was some good loot buried hidden inside and there was an epic level bow in a chest, but opening that seemed to wake a whole bunch of skeletons and they seemed to be communicating with my skeleton skeletopathically and the one inside me wanted out. And yes, I have seen that pirate software short. But I harvested up a bunch of mycelium from this glowing root vein right next to the base. I think it's probably useful. If not, it's at least radioactive. But the homestead here is about halfway towards the alchemist ancient vault. So I set that as my waypoint and started heading off in that direction, finding another bandit camp along the way, which just means free metal scrap for me if I can clear everything as they're camping outside the door of the alchemist spot and I'm just working my way through them one at a time. Between multiple health bars, which I can now stack, knowing how to supply and use all of the different food stuffs, having bandages so that I can actually take a hit or two, and a shield that can parry and tank a lot of this damage, I'm doing okay fighting my way through all of the enemies here. I made my way towards the egg and then saw who was writing all these books waiting inside. It's Balthazar! I don't trust you for a second, Balthazar. So Balthazar would allow me to be able to make potions and other supplies, and knowing how good healing potions are here, that's going to be useful. So I crafted up a few blocks, took a quick nap, and the following morning started doing a little bit of building. First on my own house, upgrading and expanding some of the windows that had been made here so that they could fit the 3x3 three three round window panes and then starting construction on a proper house for Balthazar himself. I used different wood for the floor using shroud wood and then using some mycelial infected blocks to give this kind of like a 
otherworldly vibe. It's an apothecary. They're a potion keeper. They should have a place that looks weird, right? But I made a simple two by two hut, making sure to fill in all of the corners, but I would need a lot of flint to be able to make the grindstone, which is the actual workstation. So I warped over towards the close tower and then sailed over towards that small flint mine that I had found a while back. I mined up there until I had about 50 flint, crafting up the grindstone, placing it and Balthasar inside of his new home, and then making a few other just small assorted decorative blocks, putting them around the area. Some small fences for the front yard, some scaffolding for the sides of buildings so that the town looked like it was being constructed, because it was. Spending some time doing cooking and then investing some of the eight skill points I had been banking from clearing the elixir wells and leveling up a couple times during the last few days of adventuring. In talking to Balthazar, I realized he could craft shroud cores, and in my mind I was thinking that's what I needed to upgrade the base, so I made as many of them as I possibly could, going over and talking to the flame well, realizing that I was just one short to be able to upgrade the altar to level 3. So I just did a little bit more general decorating around the place, knowing that I'm going to go out and do some fighting later. I put a nightstand by my bed. I put some small tables and chairs, some candles around everywhere so that the bases wouldn't be too unlit, throwing an additional crafting table in Balthazar's area so I can make the stuff necessary for Balthazar's crafting so I can make anything that would require a crafting table that was part of the potion brewing process without having to constantly walk back and forth. After that, I checked on my quest, seeing this one labeled a story of fire that looked like it was about a glide away from the tower, and it was relatively close to the area that I had been clearing by doing the homestead and the alchemist vault. So I started running over in that direction, seeing that I could actually use my grappling hook to shortcut my way up and above some of the rock walls here and bypass having to go through the shroud entirely. That actually led me to a new home with some other lore and a lot of explosives hidden inside and another cave that I was able to get to that led to another flame shrine that gave me another spark. I did end up diving down into the shroud though, to be able to collect some of the resources so I can make that last shroud core, so I'd be able to upgrade the altar back at home, fighting a whole bunch of enemies and finding a book that was telling me that there was some secret blocks hidden up in the hamlet that I had just been to in the top of the church. So I started climbing, working my way up the church building that I had cleared the dungeon of just a few days prior, not knowing that even more was hidden upstairs, climbing all the ladders, making my way to the belfry and unlocking some stone shingles so that the roofs of my houses could now look a little bit more unique. From there, I warped home, banked them, took a quick nap, and we're back to work the next day. Where I thought, I'm a builder, so I probably want to get a bunch more building supplies, and that carpenter waypoint seems like the one that I'm going to want to go to. So I figured, let's head east, jumping off and sailing directly into the shroud, realizing that, oh, okay, there's murderous red goo if you stand on it. Well, that was inconvenient. Uh, gonna have to go and not step in the giant red death goo this time. What a horrible place to land. What bad luck. I dove back down into the shroud and immediately hit the goo again, going in for a third attempt, finding a little bit of land that was filled with the shrouded zombie creatures, fighting a few of those and unlocking a new waypoint here, a new mine that would have apparently some new resources that I could collect. But I headed back up into the area where my tombstone was, collected everything, and explored this space a little bit. It was at a point where I could kind of just climb out of the shroud to reset my time whenever I needed to. And it was also the southernmost point of the world with this giant red force field just blocking it off. Oh no, 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 the red goo. I hate the red goo. You just randomly land in red goo and then all of a sudden you're dead. Okay, now I'm just mad at the red goo, I'm not gonna lie. I flew back over, recollected my stuff, and found myself in a spot where I kind of felt trapped. There was no real clear way up. 
I did eventually escape the goo trap, seeing a shroud root above ground just hovering on one of the nearby islands. I used my bow and arrow to take out the flying enemies that were protecting it. No idea what they are, but that's scary. Flying in, taking care of the last few guards, and chopping that down for a skill point and making a safe haven here in the shroud. From there, I did a little bit of parkour, bouncing my way from island to island, making my way into the town of Morwina, which is really overrun with wolves at the moment and has a ton of resources here that I could collect as long as I just run around breaking down all of the nodes. There's also a carpentry camp just to the north of that where I was able to get a little bit of lore and some supplies and some caves that scream I will spawn monsters at some point in time that I will probably come back to later. But now closer than ever, I headed over towards the carpentry waypoint, which was actually an enshrouded area. So I had to fight my way through all of the mobs that were around here, collecting a few of the supplies and heading down into the ancient vaults, which actually went underground to a spot that kind of matches the shroud wells that I've interacted with previously. And it's here where I found out what that flying creature is by fighting two of them in a very enclosed space. <laughs> that wizard came from the moon. I'm not gonna lie, I'm kind of excited for Final Shape. We'll do some stuff on Dose with that. But with both of the witches covered, I'm starting to be a little bit nervous because I'm starting to run low on time. I'm underneath two minutes and I need to dig my way up and out of here, hopefully finding a safe space or somewhere where I can reset my time because if not, I'm gonna die and losing all my stuff here would be really bad. I did find a flare, which replenished about half of my time, giving me the energy I needed to climb up the grates and then start digging my way into the vault itself. It was actually blocked off with a pile of dirt. In there was another one of those wizard creatures, which took a decent bit to fight. But eventually I was able to clear them and unlock a new friend, but that didn't clear the shroud here. So instead, I had to fight my way back out with a whole lot of them following me out into the uncorrupted area and needing a little bit of teaching of who's exactly the boss. Once you're outside of your fog, I'm gonna win here, okay? But I'm actually pretty far out to the east, which makes me think that I should try to find a fast travel point over here so I don't need to fly over the goo zone anytime soon. There was one of the ancient spires pretty close nearby in the low meadows, so I headed over there and warped in, watching the sunrise outside as I'm busy bouncing around over all of these spike plates and the new electrical traps that were installed. The security system on these gets more and more intricate with each passing day. Now, I'm not gonna show you exactly how to solve this step by step because I want you to be able to go and explore it if you happen to pick the game up yourself, but I enjoyed this. It's a nice little logical break from the combat and a much more claustrophobic and linear version of it compared to the overall shroud where I'm just kind of running in circles and trying to fight around a few different mobs who have all sorts of magic. I don't know how it works. I was able to find some really good consumables in the chests and unlock all of the remaining puzzles, getting a epic level root staff, which if I can unlock some better magic spells is probably something I'd upgrade my wand out of. I did make a few mistakes along the way, figuring out just how much damage those spikes actually do. Ow. Finding another room that has lava on like the fourth floor. I don't wanna know what the floor underneath that lava is made out of, but honestly, I'm impressed. I found another one of those puzzles that had a target that you actually had to shoot going back to me fighting damage numbers on the first of these plates all the way back in the first tower, finally paying off. With a chest inside, having a bunch of potions that look really powerful. That actually was basically the last level, making my way up to the flame altar at the very top and unlocking a new fast travel point. Once I could return relatively easily, I warped back home, dropping off all of the resources I had collected and now being able to summon the new carpenter, Cade the Dwarf, who's gonna be able to unlock all sorts of cool new building blocks for my home. Cade wants a kiln as their workstation, which would require a whole lot of clay. And I don't have any of that, but I do know what the next step is, building them a nice little house. I made a two by two area, mainly with wood walls to match the carpentry aesthetic, creating a nice home for them, dropping them off and unlocking a bunch of new quests. I had a bunch of runes stored up, so I upgraded all of my current weaponry to their max tier, basically. Checking through all of the new resource nodes and supplies and things that Cade could build, really giving my home an aesthetic upgrade more so than anything. There's some really cool stuff here. I just need to try to find the supplies for it. 
But I figured let's head off towards where the carpentry area was. Maybe that's where clay resource nodes spawn. So I warped to the tower, jumping off and into the shroud, taking care of a few extra quests that I had. One of which was in a very small spider dungeon that I fought my way through relatively quickly, picking up an eternal ice bolt spell, which I can slot into that rod and use for forever, basically. I spent some more time fighting in the shroud, collecting shroud liquid and spores from all of the enemies around here, just trying to do a bit of a resource run, get all of my stores up so that I could be crafting a lot for a major base upgrade to make things look really nice as we approach kind of our final hour or so in the game. I did find another one of those ruined towers in the shroud that makes a small little spot above the cloud layer, which would allow me to fast travel back to the ancient spire where I could then dive down and head back over towards the carpentry camp thinking maybe clay spawned there. I actually got turned in a slightly different direction as it became night, following a fork in the road which led me towards a bridge and maybe the worst motel I've ever stayed at. <laughs> Just cozying up with my buddy Phil here. It's fine. But the following morning, I explored where this had taken me to, finding a water wheel mill or something along those lines. I'm not sure how to describe this building, except filled with bandits. That definitely would be appropriate. I fought through the ones on the lower level, unlocking a chest with some nice supplies in, seeing some upper level areas that I would need to get to, and having to go up, out, and around, parkouring on the outside of the building and jumping down, getting an epic level bow that was just barely not better than the one I currently had, so I broke that down into a decent bit of runes, which I could use to further upgrade my gear. From there, I took a dive and glide back south towards Meriden, checking out the carpentry camp again, trying to see what supplies spawned around here and if I had any chance at finding clay. Taking care of the wolves at this point is pretty good. We both kind of dash through each other anime style before I go in for the backstab damage and can usually kill them before they can get a second attack off. I did a lot of mining in the different points where it looked like there were resource nodes, finding a lot of flint, a lot of dirt, but no clay. But I am getting a bunch of metal scraps and other supplies from all of these spawnable resource nodes here, which will be useful. I warped back home as my inventory was fully full, checking out the skill tree as I had three points to burn. And I used that to upgrade my base resource gathering so that I could do that a little bit faster so I could focus time on building as the clock is starting to run out. But it turns out unlocking my fourth ally had all of my existing allies have new quests unlocked that they were sending me on with just a simple conversation. I checked around on the map and they mostly pushed me in the northern direction, but I did a quick little bit of building around the area, making some scaffolding placements around all of the houses so that it looked like the town was still under construction. Because it was. From there, I warped to the northernmost fast travel point I had and then just sailed north, continuing in that direction. I passed Ferndale, which is a town inhabited by bandits that if I had more time to complete, I would go in and bring democracy to, but I just don't. I'm, I'm really looking for clay. I want to unlock all these cool new building blocks. Continuing north, I found a bit of an inn on the road, mainly inhabited by bees, which took me a little bit by surprise, but hey, good on them for establishing small businesses. I want to support small business wherever I can. But just north of that was some nice orange lumps of clay, which I spent a decent bit of time mining, getting about 50 of them in my pocket before continuing along towards an ancient spire I saw in the distance. I figure if I can get a waypoint all the way up here, further travel for this resource or others would be super easy. I just wasn't ready for what I was gonna find along the way. What the heck is that? It's level 11. Oh, I'm in an area I'm not supposed to be. <laughs> so realizing that I had kind of outstepped my progression a little bit and was now running into an area with enemies double my current level, I backtracked a little bit, heading towards another one of the waypoints nearby that could potentially unlock something useful for me. 
Here I found a respawn altar, which is not ominous at all. Running around through the geometry, finding more of those piranha plants, which I can take out with a bow and arrow, and realizing that their danger comes in numbers. Piranha plants. Oh, why is that on my head? Why is that on my head? No, get it off my head. Oh no. Oh, this is scary. So it turns out I had stumbled on another ally that had originally not been listed, a farmer who I could unlock. And their ancient vault was a bit of a parkour and movement challenge, taking all of the tech that I had learned thus far and combining it into an ascending spiral of puzzles, which I needed to be able to unlock each one without falling. Because as soon as you do, you basically have to restart the whole thing over again. I guess you can guess what was about to happen. Wait, oh no, that's not what I wanted to do. I hit the wrong button. Oh, that's annoying. So having accidentally warped home, I just dropped off my resources and spent some time making myself some lock picks and bandages so I'd be able to heal myself up whenever I inevitably took damage taking on that vault, had a quick little nap here and then headed back out the following day, warping back to the tower and then flying north. This time I saw a flame shrine along the way and broke my legs to go explore it. Ow but I ran past Ferndale, seeing a path that actually led towards the front door of the farmer's ancient vault. Turns out I had taken the longer and more complicated way to find it earlier, like I've never done that before. But I made my way back in, this time going low, checking out the bottom level that's directly next to the lava, finding a gold tier endless life ring, which is huge. A bunch of leech life potential there. Oh, that's so good. From there, I doubled back, covering the areas that I had already accomplished, figuring out that the traps do disable themselves behind you, which does make it a little bit easier. I was able to swing across that path successfully this time around, parkouring around all of the lava and disabling the traps as I moved from level to level. Once I climbed and was walking around the exterior, I was actually about two thirds of the way done already. After one quick little jaunt over some simple spike plates, I found a chest which had some fireball spells inside and hit the last button which allowed me to glide right in, opening the door and unlocking another ally. And I figure since I had saved the ally that I wasn't even told existed, I really should go and complete the set, saving the hunter as well, so that I'd have the whole crew ready to go for a potential extra 10 hours if everybody likes this video. So I started heading over towards that waypoint from another one of the towers I had unlocked, fighting a quick little spider basement along the way, finding out that this one was guarded by a whole new faction of enemies I hadn't seen before. Oh, you look like a big boy. Don't know what you are. Like, where people? Oh. Oh, it's where people. Wookies! I'm sorry, Chewbacca. There's Wookiees. Okay, we're gonna fight Wookiees now. I don't know what the actual name is and I am sorry to the devs that I'm just naming everything in a silly way like I do here, but they're Wookiees. They look so awesome and I'm really excited. Fighting through all of them takes a little bit of like, it hurts because they just do look cool. Especially, I feel bad for these two, which are dead in the path of the electric bolt traps. Clearly, they never learned the tech of jumping over the danger. But I swung across lava, making my way through all of the different floors, having the final door open automatically, which allowed me to rescue the hunter and complete my crew. With them now recruited, I warped back home, summoning both of my new allies and getting them set up. They had a ton of quests for me, but as always, they're asking for shelter, 
before I could really get anything done with them. So I realized that I could set both of them up in the existing spaces that I had set up with my alchemist and carpenter respectively, since they were the two by two spaces and they don't need independent buildings for each of them. They also all had a ton of quests now, including all of my existing NPCs having new quests available, including the fact that my carpenter has stolen a cache of weapons that my blacksmith had put somewhere to use his tools, giving me a new waypoint to go out and explore, which is honestly just funny. The drying rack was actually really easy to create because I had a ton of resources available from my many, many supply runs. So I set some furs to start drying while I'm gonna do a little bit of focusing here at home. First was doing a little bit of cooking to make sure I had all the food that I needed. Secondly was collecting all of my blocks and making a bunch of candles to light all of the houses for my allies so they're not standing there in the dark in each of their individual homes. But in addition to all of the cosmetic items that I'm putting around town, an advanced glider is now available to me if I could just get some shroud sacks. I don't know exactly what they are, but that is something that we might just try to sneak in before we run out of time. But I made a whole bunch of nails, which allowed me to make new doors, which allowed me upgrade my home, finally sealing out the door to the back porch that I had put there some forever ago and had kind of just forgotten about. I also put doors on all of the NPC places, making myself an upgraded bed so it's not just a mattress on the floor, getting some shelves that I could put some of the different clay items that I had created on, and getting a ladder so that I can access the balcony storage area that I had put inside my home. And as it rolled over and day 17 began, I only had about 20 minutes left on the clock for this 10 hour adventure. So I figured let's spend it improving our base. Firstly, I set some bones to grind in the grinding stone so that I could make bone meal for farming soil, which would allow me to make seed pods. I then went out grabbing a whole lot of flint, which would allow me to upgrade and get a few things cooking, using my final few skill points to upgrade my lumberjack ability so I could chop trees even faster. From there, I warped to the fast travel point across the bridge area to where there's a lot of the different trees that drop resin, spending time chopping down a ton of trees so that I could unlock a whole bunch of resin, as well as a bunch of wood for some of the different carpentry projects that were available to me now. And the speed upgrades actually made a difference. It was one or two swings shorter per tree, which allowed me to get more than what I needed for what I think makes a good finale. I made a wooden banquet set, chairs and benches for all of my allies, plus myself, plus a whole bunch of clay fired pottery. So we're actually eating off of good plates and stuff. From there, I made an outdoor banquet platform with the foundations, a larger space to be able to put everything down, putting down the table and chairs with a space for myself at the end. From there, I set the table. I might be standing on it while I'm setting the table, but hey, you do you in your house, I do me in mine. I even made a rug to be able to put underneath my chair so that everything looked really nice. I grabbed the farm soil and made a seed pod, putting that on the outside of the building and planting some flowers that I'd be able to use for further decorations, putting the remaining pottery and furniture and dishware on the shelves back in my home so it would be clean for a future usage. And with the timer going off on my 10 hour adventure, I resummoned all of my friends out in the banquet area at home and sat down at the table to relax. Cheers to the end of this adventure. Why is everybody staring at me? Thank you all so much for watching. Once again, a big shout out and thank you to Keen Games for sponsoring this video. If this does well, we'll do another 10 hours and there's a whole huge world out there for me to discover. Check it out at the link down in the description. Take care of yourselves, be good to each other, and I'll talk to you next time.